This is a presentation that I presented for the ICT Ad competition. Um, the topic is Real Learning Happens Outside the Classroom. I'm sure it'll be a very interesting topic for you all. And uh, like, um, like everybody knows, uh, most of you might be thinking that conventional learning will happen inside the classroom. But uh, I'm here to change your mind within the next 10 minutes. Next slide. So now onwards to the million dollar question, why do we learn? Can anybody answer this question? Anybody here? Anybody want to answer to guess? To improve our knowledge. Uh, to improve your knowledge. To earn money. To earn money. When I ask this question to most of the members of Generation Y, the typical answers I get my, from my friends are to get a job, to earn money, and sometimes to get married or just because my parents forced me to do so. So when I look at this, I'm sure uh, there must be some reasoning beyond this. There must be something beyond uh, to the, some answers to why we learn. I'm sure that you've been, you're familiar with this since we've been showed it a countless number of times. This is Bloom's taxonomy. There's six different levels. First, remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. In a nutshell, the first layer is, if you want to understand, if you want to learn something, you have to go progressively from the bottom layers to the top layers. Um, when you first remember something, that's, the, that's what we're taught to do at school. It's the basic layer, basic level of learning. Uh, after that, you understand it. Once you've understood something, you apply it. And this goes all the way till you are finally able to create something with your, with your knowledge. But uh, in conventional learning, it do, we are made to become like automatons. We just mug up what we learn, and we don't learn anything new. So if that's the problem, then what is the solution? This is the solution that I propose for a good model on learning. Learning should be integrated. Integrated in the sense that it should be complete. Second, it should be value-based. Values, human values, which form the essence of our culture, should be integrated with the learning. And third, it should not stifle our creativity, but it should promote it. So based upon those three rules, let's see, learning nurtures creativity. Uh, so classroom teaching, it, in general, it stifles creativity because we're asked to memorize answers written by someone else. We don't. Uh, get a chance to unleash our creativity. So when, when, when does the situation occur where we can show our creativity? Creativity is born out of freedom. Only when we have the freedom to write our own answer and give our own justification, that's when uh, our creativity will be unleashed. And we all know that in today's world of 3D printing, Internet of Things, today's world thrives on innovation. And uh, if we want, if the next generation wants to solve the problems of tomorrow, we need to adapt a learning curriculum which also supports innovation. I'm sure you've all seen this. The mo How many of you have watched the movie Nandan? Please raise your hands. Yeah, pretty much all of you. Uh, this is this. This is Sathya from Nandan. Um, in this movie, he comes and he tries to recite a speech by memorization, but when the Hero, he just changes a few words in the speech and it has a completely different meaning. But because he hasn't understood what he's learned, he just recites it, uh, recites it as it is and it becomes a huge uh, difficult. So the bottom line, what I want to say is that human beings are not programmed machines and uh, so we should uh, take to heart what we're learning. Do any of you recognize who this person is? Okay, how many of you watched the Rocky movies? Rocky Balboa. Okay, uh, this is Sylvester Stallone. This is one of my favorite quotes. It's about uh, that learning embraces failure. Uh, as you can see, life is not about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. He says this in this, uh, it's a, Rocky Balboa, it's a boxing movie where he becomes a boxing champion. And um, what he's trying to say is, failure is a part of learning. In today's society, we consider failure as something taboo. If we go into our home and we say, I failed in the examinations, then nobody will accept it. 
But what I believe is that failure is a part of the learning process. It's an essential part. And only we can, uh, we, the important thing to remember is that we should learn from our mistakes. Here are some famous failures who've learned from their mistakes and succeeded in life. Michael Jordan, Steve Jobs, Oprah Winfrey. All of these are famous, all of these people have something in common. Apart from the fact that they're hugely su successful in their fields, it's also that at each and uh, every one of their lives, they've occurred failure at something, at some time of their life. But the important part is, they haven't only um, met failure, but they've risen beyond it. The second part I wanted to say is that uh, learning should have some value-based education. The most important, I find it uh, ironic that some of the most important human values of honesty, courage, and respect, uh, they're lacking in today's education. No matter what, in the ancient Gurukula system, this wasn't the case. No matter what you learn, if you don't have these human values, then there's no point to whatever you're learning. Now we come to the topic of contributing to society. Uh, I'll ask you a question. If a nuclear, s some scientist, he uh, finds a way to split the atom and he creates an atom bomb with it, would you consider that as uh, contributing to society or detrimental to society? Which one? The first one or the second one? Second one. Um, here are two people, I'm sure you're familiar with the second person, Malala Yousafzai. Uh, she's a world youth icon and uh, one of my role models. This first guy, his name is Ab Mr. Abu Bakr. He's, he has a PhD, but he uses his knowledge. He's a terrorist, uh, and he's uh, head of the Black Sh one terrorist organization. And um, so he's using whatever he's learned to, dis to cause disturbance to other people and uh, wreak havoc on them. But this, uh, the same education is used by this girl to promote um, education all around the world. So I believe that learning should help the society to prosper and not to annihilate. Now we reach a very important statistic in the presentation, the number 14. The significance of this number is that uh, last year, in 2014, the number of suicides in IIT uh, were 14. So uh, I think that any learning curriculum should, so, should teach you how to solve problems and uh, making decisions, because both of these are very important. Um, if people from the, the cream of the crop, if the, from the most elite institutions in the country, if uh, whatever they've learned, they're not able to cope with the problems and they commit suicide, then there's something lacking in our education. So, uh, you all know that the world, the real world is not just a, a bed of roses. In that, uh, a lot of people may fall down and uh, they, but the important, you'll meet lots, um, you'll meet, you'll face lots of obstacles in life, but the important point is to learn from that and uh, overcome the obstacles. And uh, I'm sure that many of you think that uh, learning ends with as uh, soon as you're done with college, after you finish college. But that's not the case. Uh, real learning happens till the, till the last breath that you breathe. So it's a lifelong process starting, from starting all the way from home before you go to school, uh, continues past our school up to college. And even after college and we're applying it in our field, we can learn from life. There's a lot to learn. Let's see what uh, Swami Vivekananda has to say. He says that the aims of education is that uh, education should be for self-development, for character formation, and also for it should serve mankind. So any education curriculum should focus on this. Uh, here's a lesson from my own life. Uh, I've been talking about others for this all long, but uh, what I've come to know is that CGP is just a number and a degree certificate is a piece of paper. I learned this from uh, one of the instructors who came so I thought it'd be, I, this is one moment which touched my life, and I hope it touches yours. I want to stress that learning doesn't have to happen only in the classroom. We can learn from anything, and uh, not to be demotivated by failure. So, so far I've been talking about that uh, learning doesn't happen inside the classroom. So what's the solution, what can we do? Well, first of all, you can volunteer for social service. For example, you can take part, participate in NSS, or enroll in some, uh, innovative campaigns like Swachh Bharat, 
organized by our Prime Minister. You can take up the sports discipline because sports teaches you all about teamwork, hard work, and uh, giving respect to your opponents. Also, you can take up an art discipline because it'll you know, unleash your creativity. It's a great way to unleash your creativity. Yeah. So here are two examples of schools which uh, have, in, have a learning curriculum which is not the traditional method followed in classrooms. The first case study is Rishi Valley School. It's located obviously in Rishi Valley. It was founded by um, an educational leader, Jiddu Krishnamurti. And here's one of the alumni of that. She, right now she's a, she studied in the school and she's also a master in classical dance. But, and right now she's currently the senior advisor to world leaders on public policy and international affairs. I'm sure you recognize this, Mr. Dr. Amrit Yasen. He's a Nobel laureate in economics. He's also a case um, alumni of Vishwabharati University. In this university, they um, there's a nearby village, and uh, they try and teach whatever they learn to the villagers to improve the quality of their life. So I think we can learn a whole thing or two from them. So what I want to conclude is the ultimate goal of education is to make sure that a child becomes prepared to reach the challenges of adulthood. So any learning curriculum, this is not followed in tra traditional learning, and you should ma make sure that it's followed. So as you can see, if we follow these steps, I'm sure we can follow in the footsteps of Gandhiji. Because if Gandhiji had decided to pursue law, then today the world would not have gotten a Mahatma. So I want all of you to learn for real and to live for real. Thanks.